Hi, everybody. Thanks for tuning in for these encouraging words together. This is our chance right here at Friendship Village and Places Beyond for us to join our hearts together and come before the Lord as we do, as we learn to depend on him, as we choose to have faith in his word and to put it into practice, as we bring the Lord the concerns and frustrations or the praises and the thanksgivings of our heart as we, as we delve into that relationship with him. We can discover in his presence strength by his Holy Spirit who fills us even now with the goodness of God and gives us hope for a better tomorrow. Thanks so much for tuning in today. Our scripture verse for today was sent over by our uh, our associate chaplain, Mary Myrick. And when I say sent over, it's because my office is in the independent living side of our facility and her office is over in the assisted living and skilled nursing side. And she sends it by email. She sent over this verse for us to consider today and perhaps an unexpected verse. It comes from 1 Chronicles 4. And if you were to turn to 1 Chronicles 4 today, I'm not going to tell you that it is exciting reading. Those early chapters in uh, Chronicles give us genealogies, clan histories, families. This person was the father of this person, and these were their sons, and these were their grandkids. And it goes on, and most of it is just names, names that that, uh, matter in history and help us make some important lineage connections but doesn't make for always the most exciting reading. But right in the midst of it, there is a very interesting change that takes place to describing the person of um, Jabez. Now, most of that chapter is just names and places. This person was the father of this person. This person was the son of that person. But in verse 9 and 10, we get a little bit more of the circumstance, the color, the, the, the I don't know, the, the extended view of what's happening with a man named Jabez. And this is what the scripture says. This is the verse Mary sent over, First Chronicles chapter 4, verses 9 and 10, where it says, Now Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. And let me pause there. We don't know anything about the brothers. There's no descriptive terms to describe anywhere else, anyone else in these opening verses. Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. His mother had named him Jabez, saying, because I bore him in pain. Let's pause there for a second. The name Jabez apparently is very much like the Hebrew word for pain. In the scripture text, it provides a footnote to let us know that, though it doesn't tell us what the exact Hebrew word is that sounds that way, and I'm not a Hebrew scholar. But the, but the scripture text actually has a footnote that tells us that Jabez, the name, is, uh, is a word that sounds like the Hebrew word for pain. And it was often the case, especially in those days, that children were named according to the circumstances of the moment. Um, Names had meaning, and meanings were often attributed based on the specific things that were happening. So here's Jabez's mother, who apparently had a very difficult labor, and opted to name her son a name that very much represented the pain that she had been that she had experienced. So with that in mind, let me read it again. Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. His mother had named him Jabez, saying, Because I bore him in pain. And Jabez called out to the God of Israel, If only you would bless me and enlarge my territory. May your hand be with me and keep me from harm, so that I will be free from pain. That was his prayer before the Lord. And before the verse ends, it says, And God granted the request of Jabez. Mary's point in sending that over to us is this. All of us go through moments of pain. Every single one of us. Sometimes we will go through circumstances that seem like horrific pain, terrible tragedy, deep disappointment. What do we do in those moments? Some people turn away from God. Some people adopt the view of God is so loving and if he's so good and if he's all powerful, then how could he have he let this thing happen to me? It's a very narrow view of God and how he works. Rather than realizing that 
God in his wisdom often allows that which he could prevent in his power. That often he has a purpose beyond which we might or might not understand in the moment. But in the midst of whatever we face, whatever that pain, whatever that obstacle is, whatever that difficulty, whatever that heartache, that that becomes an opportunity for us to decide right then and there, what is it that we will now do? And over and over again, the scripture calls us to take those disappointments, those hurts, those fears, those pains, and offer them to the Lord in prayer. To let the Lord know, I need you. That we would look to him to be our source of strength. That, that he would be the, the one that we look to to get us through. And then as we do that, as we place our faith in him, as we learn to depend on the Lord, he gives us the grace we need to overcome. That doesn't always mean he makes the difficulty disappear. Sometimes it means that he gives us the strength to endure until we overcome. Sometimes it means that, that he's with us to comfort us and help us in those moments until the day we see him face to face when he makes everything new again. Mary's point is, is that we would notice what is it that Jabez does. His very name has to do with pain. But rather than live in fear, rather than cower away, rather than let that become an obstacle in his life, he takes that concern and makes it a point of intercession before the Lord. Lord, my name means pain, but if you bless me, then my territory can be enlarged. There can be strength that comes to me. If your hand is with me, you can keep me from harm. I don't have to always be worried about pain or live in the pain that I'm currently in. I can be free if you are with me and if I trust in you. That is the essence of Jabez's prayer. And in his prayer, what we find is a model for what to do with our pain. When we're hurting, when we're afraid, when we're angry, when we're frustrated, when we feel overwhelmed, rather than shake our fist at God, rather than just get angry, rather than just try to somehow get through in our own strength only to be overwhelmed time and time again, we can take those concerns and entrust them to the one who really does love us. Lord, if you bless us, we'll be blessed. If you give us grace, we'll make it through. You're the one that even can enlarge my territory, both my responsibility and my influence and my blessing. You can do that if I trust in you and you can be the one to get me through this time of pain until I am pain free. That's the heart of the prayer of Jabez. So in sending that over, Mary's reminding us, in the midst of hardship, turn to the Lord. Bring him your concerns. Lean hard on him. He is trustworthy and he will see us through. With that thought, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to seek you today. Lord, we confess to you, we all go through hard times. There are moments of pain and heartache and disappointment that come to us all. In the midst of those seasons, help us, Lord, not to turn away from you, but to turn toward you. We lift to you our concerns. We lift to you our burdens. We lift to you our cares, and we ask that you would meet us by your goodness and your grace. Fill our minds with the understanding you really do love us. Fill our hearts, Lord, with your peace that we would not fret and worry over the struggle of life that sometimes comes. In all things and at all times, may we trust you and help us to experience, Lord, the freedom that is found in you. Thank you for grace that is strong enough to get us through, strong enough to overcome the pains and heartaches of past experience, strong enough to take us all the way home to you where we are ultimately free. Fill us anew with your hope and help us to share that hope with others. Thank you for hearing our prayer today. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Whenever you're fearful, whenever you're afraid, whenever you're frustrated, Whenever you're overwhelmed, whenever you're in pain, continue to lift that need before the Lord. He truly does care for you. I want to say thanks for tuning in today, and I have kind of a bonus and exciting announcement to share with all of you. These encouraging words videos 
have been in a playlist that we just call Encouraging Words, and I've put that on my personal YouTube page. We started this way back during COVID as we were looking to meet the needs of our residents who were forced into isolation by um, government regulations. And so with a simple built-in web camera and a microphone, we began to record these daily encouragements. Of course, the isolation part of COVID eventually waned away. And yet so many residents here were, uh, were asked, how, how can we keep these going? And so we've done that for three years. And we're not stopping yet. We're thankful for how the Lord continues to use these type of videos to encourage people both here at Friendship Village and now in places far beyond. So what's the special announcement? Well, all of this so far has been done through my own personal YouTube page. But just this week, we have launched an official Friendship Village Chaplain Department YouTube page. And you can find it. I will do my best to put uh, the letters up on the screen. But you can go to youtube.com backslash the at symbol and then FVC Chaplain. FVC like Friendship Village Chesterfield Chaplain. YouTube.com backslash FVC Chaplain. So what will you find there? Well, we're going to place these videos in addition to my own personal account. They will now go on the official Chaplain Department uh, YouTube page. But that's not all. There is another tab. These will show up in a playlist just like, like we've had on my personal page, Encouraging Words, and be listed under the video section. But there is another section of the page that's just called Live. And when you touch that live on the FBC Chaplain Department page, it'll take you to now our live streaming options. Recently, we've installed some new technology which allows us to live stream to the internet the events that take place in our chapel. We did the first one last night with a Bible study. And people could watch our Wednesday night Bible study live in the moment as it happened. They could add their own comments. Now, I'm not able to read those comments until later because I'm up there teaching. But, uh, but if you want to comment and interact and, uh, or ask a question, you most certainly could do that. And, uh, but it's not just our Bible studies. It's all our events. So now our Sunday morning worship services also streamed live to the Internet. And then the reason we did this was because many of the memorial services that we do here at Friendship Village, I've gotten requests from family members, can we live stream those events to the internet for families to watch wherever they are who aren't able to come and be with us here in Chesterfield. And so that was the impetus. We, we got the technology for that purpose. We did a memorial service today for one of our dear residents and that we live streamed. But here's the advantage. Under that live tab, not only can you watch our events live as they happen, but once they've taken place, YouTube records and saves them in that live tab. We've added some playlists so that you can find all the Wednesday night Bible studies, all the Sunday morning services, all the um, memorial services and special tabs. But you can find all of that now and watch them anytime you want. Interact with them whenever it's convenient. Interact with them whenever it is convenient for you at our new YouTube Chaplain Department page. Again, youtube.com backslash the at symbol FVC Chaplain. And you'll find all of that there right now. You can have... Uh, uh, the option to subscribe to those videos. If you want to, every time we live stream an event, if, uh, if you want to be notified with that, be sure to subscribe and hit the little bell to, for all. And all of that means that when you open YouTube, you'll, uh, you'll get those notifications of some of your top options to click on. That's my update for now. Hopefully I've made that clear and it's not just clear as mud. We're all learning here as we go. We're excited to offer you that new opportunity. Thanks so much for tuning in for these encouraging words. May they bless your heart. And may you consider using them to bless somebody else by repeating the information. Or if you're watching online, sending them the link to today's video as well. Thanks so much for being here. God bless you. We'll see you 